My guest in the Nimataion today is Dr. Jack Hunter, and together we are spinning a yarn. Jack, you're an anthropologist. Uh, your focus is on studying the paranormal, and um, I'm very happy to have you on my show today. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> What has been your favorite childhood story? Well, the story that I've been thinking about this since you asked me, and the story that I have chosen to talk about is actually, it's not a well-known story. It's actually a series of stories that were told to me by my auntie when I was you know, little, uh, to me and my sister when we were growing up. And they were the stories that she made up uh, and told us as we were going to bed. And they were about um, a gnome called um, the Rainbow Polisher. <laughs> His uh, job was, you know, as his name suggests, to go and polish rainbows. And in the story, uh, the stories that she told us, me and my sister were included in the stories. Mm -hmm. So we would go up to this tree and knock on the little door and the rainbow polisher would come out and then he would take us off to the rainbows to, uh, you know, polish them and clean them up and make them nice and shiny. And she used to tell us these stories really regularly. But the thing that really... Um, made them sort of interesting to me, especially interesting, was the fact that even though I knew that she was sort of making them up and drawing on kind of like, you know, an Enid, Enid Blyton kind of idea, you know, like of a big ears and that kind of thing and Noddy, um, if they took on a kind of a reality for me that became manifest one day, not in the sense of going, to, of actually seeing uh, the rainbow polisher, but one day, When I was uh, younger, we came home from school and our dog had been run over. And I was really you know, upset about this. And I remember uh, going up, walking up the hill outside where I lived at the time, which was a caravan. And um, I went up there as a child and I called out to the rainbow polisher. And I remember at the time thinking that it was a strange thing to do and being aware that it was a, a weird thing to do because I knew that he was a made up character. But somehow in my, in my moment of uh, you know, grief about the dog, uh, I kind of went out to look for him. And I, I didn't see him or anything like that, but I distinctly remember and I, I, I always go back to it because it's a strange point of <laughs> in, moment in my childhood Uh, where I went out to find a rainbow polish in this moment of grief. So yeah, that's the story that um, <laughs> I wanted to tell you. That's very touching. And uh, it, did you get a response? I don't think, I, I don't remember seeing anything or hearing anything, but, you know, the fact that I'm still kind of interested in these things and uh, writing about the possible reality of... Um, you know, fairies and all of these kinds of things. I think that something in it resonated with me on a deep level. And there's something interesting as well about the fact that it was fiction, but also, you know, an experiential and emotional reality at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they are fictional, but they are real in their own way. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting, isn't it, how... Um, made up stories or what we think of as made up uh, affect us in such a way that uh, they help us overcome grief or or whatever and and inspire us to this day yeah so it that, that's very powerful i think I mean, so i mean um i i wonder if there is a rainbow polisher that um maybe searched for a person to tell his stories and um, found your auntie. Yeah, exactly. And I love the idea also that, and this is like, I'm aware of the fact that she was drawing on Enid Blyton kind of imagery and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But even Enid Blyton was drawing on traditional fairy lore. So it's a, it is still a continuous kind of stream all the yeah. way through to these uh, bedtime fairy stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or maybe there is um, a sort of entity or entities that are, um, it, it is their job to console children and they disguise themselves in whichever 
way uh, is is most useful for children. Yeah, maybe. and uh, they present themselves uh, to us as stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, it was a very, it was an amazing kind of looking back on it, an interesting moment to think about. But at the time, you know, it was fully lived, kind of calling out to something mm. uh, in a moment of grief. Mm. Mm. Um, and uh, did it ease your grief? Did... I think so. Mm. I mean, I must have come back down the hill <laughs> and gone back to the to the caravan. So it must have done something for me. But, you know, there was no kind of profound uh, experience or anything attached to it. It's just this event kind of like a prayer or something but this fictional character who mm. maybe wasn't fictional <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, how many stories uh, were you told uh, how, how for how long did it continue it, can, it was quite a long time and we always used to ask our auntie to write them down and maybe she will do one day still um but she i don't think she ever did she she always said she wanted to you know illustrate them with little drawings as well Yeah. But there was lots of stories over the, every time we went to stay with her, you know, every night we would have a story about the Rainbow Polish because we loved it. And it, it, it included us in the story. So we were engaged in it. And uh, yeah, and it spilled over into reality a couple of times too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can picture the, the Rainbow Polish quite well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you grew up in Wales? Yeah, well, I was born in Liverpool. And my auntie lives in, still lives in Liverpool in the same house that we used to go and stay at her with mm -hmm. her. Um, but yeah, we moved to Wales when I was four. So I've been here mm -hmm. about my whole life, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking because I wonder if um, the land itself uh, would lend its um, stories or entities to this inspiration. Yeah, exactly. This is the interesting thing because a lot of this stuff i mean my auntie didn't know anything about the local folklore of the area that we're living and neither did i at the time mm -hmm. but subsequently i've done a lot of research on the fairy folklore of this area and there is actually a lot <laughs> so you know perhaps it's not surprising that these kinds of things happen in in this place yeah yeah um there are mythology all over the world and and some of them are very tight to place and um Yeah, I think they speak to us or, or they're searching for outlets mm -hmm. and um, to engage with each other. Yeah, and it comes through and through stories and experiences and myths, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. What an inspiring conversation. Jack, thank you so much for um, letting us in this um, <laughs> very as yet unknown character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I hope there will be a book sometime. It would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, uh, come to think of it, um, when when Tolkien wrote down in a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit, there were no hobbits known. Yeah. And now they're everywhere. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's the same process, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe uh, this will help start the lore of the rainbow polishing gnomes. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> I'm honored to be part of it. Check, that has been an absolute pleasure. Your you. website uh, and um, uh, everything else is in the show notes. Uh, people, please read Check's books. They're amazing. I'm looking forward to see each other again. Thank you very much. <laughs> The world is magic here. <laughs>